So good morning, uh, everybody. Um, it's a really a great pleasure and a great honor to make this presentation uh, this morning at the occasion of uh, the Robert Lermit Medal. I'm really grateful to, to Rylem and to um, the jury of this medal for awarding me. So my presentation is entitled Understanding Interactions Between Cementitious Materials and Microorganisms, a key to sustainable and safe concrete structures in various contexts. So building materials are exposed to the actions of microorganisms in a variety of contexts. So for example, agro-food and agro, uh, agricultural facilities such as silage silos, um, manual silos or uh, biogas systems, sewer networks, building facades with these typical biological stains, and also humid buildings. The common point between all these situations is the presence of water or uh, high humidity. Water is the indispensable condition for life development. Microorganisms activity can alter the durability, the safety of structure, also human health and the environment with serious economic, social and soci societal consequences. Besides these negative effects, microorganisms can also be used to improve or protect building materials for example, with bio-based engineering protective systems for concrete, which are currently developed, or green walls. My research activity mainly concerns the negative impact of microorganisms, mainly biodeterioration. So what are microorganisms? Microorganisms are living organisms invisible to the naked eye. They can be found in air, in water, and in soil. They were the first form of life to develop on Earth, and one of their major characteristics is that they can evolve rapidly and adapt to new environments. So three main types of microorganisms interact with building materials. Bacteria, which are the smallest organisms, which they are single cell uh, under two micrometers, and also fungi and algae, which are li larger microorganisms. Fungi, for example, are characterized by this uh, filament uh, shape, which is called hyphae. So bacteria are mainly responsible for chemical and mineralogical biodeterioration. Algae and cyanobacteria are responsible for aesthetic biodeterioration. And fungi are responsible for both aesthetical and chemical biodeterioration. Moreover, Inside humid buildings, bacteria and fungi are responsible for health trouble indoor. My microorganisms are characterized by their metabolisms, which are all the cells' chemical reactions for their growth, which means their proliferation. Metabolism is a succession of oxidoreduction reactions, and it is characterized by three main characteristics. So, the energy, the source of energy, which can be light or chemical compounds. The electron donor, to, uh, to, uh, which is involved in the oxidoreduction reactions. And the carbon source, which is used by the microorganisms to create biomass. So electron donor and carbon source can be either organic or inorganic compounds. As an example, in sewers, sulfur oxidizing bacteria will um, uh, use uh, sulfide uh, and transform it into sulfate and hyd uh, hydronium ion. And these two compounds are responsible for very aggressive action in, uh, on concrete. Now, understanding interactions between microorganisms and building material really requires to look at the phenomenon at the local scale, even almost at the microorganism scale. Let's consider, for example, a cement cementitious material, but it can be any kind of material, in a given environment, characterized by its relative humidity, temperature, chemical compounds. At the surface of the cementitious material, microorganisms will develop often after a first chemical weathering, for example, because of carbonation. They will then organize 
into biofilms through the formation of uh, exopolymer substances. And this biofilm will interact with the environment and notably with the chemical compounds. By reaction, by metabolizing the chemical compounds, biofilm can form so organic acid, depending on the case, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and often the metabolites are aggressive and create deterioration to concrete, for example, leaching or precipitation of secondary expansive compounds. The action of these metabolites uh, is not well uh, understood yet, so we have to work on it. But another important point is the action of the material on the biofilm. Actually, for example, cementitious material will release alkalines, ions, aluminium, and this release will condition the formation and the structuration of the biofilm, and then uh, condition the aggressiveness of uh, the biofilm uh, on the material. So understanding these interactions is really necessary to develop perform, uh, concrete that perform well in these environments. And to do so, we need multidisciplinary team with, with uh, skills uh, from uh, in microbiology, chemistry, process engineering, material science and civil engineering and surface physics. And it is really the challenging aspect of this research to uh, work with people with so different skills, share knowledge and progress uh, in um, the understanding of uh, all these phenomena. So I'm going to present two aspects of my research. First, the bio deterioration of concrete in agro-industry and then the reactivity of nitrates in nuclear waste repository. So regarding uh, the durability of concrete in agro-industry, uh, the production, the collection and storage of agricultural and agro-food effluents, as well as biogas systems, are often carried out in uh, concrete structures. The problem is the low durability of concrete facilities because of biological and chemical attacks, which result into economic and environmental issues. So when we began this research, there were two main questions, scientific and technical issues. So what are the mechanisms of alterations of concrete induced by the aggressive agents in order to develop concrete that perform well in these environments? And which are the methods for this investigation? Actually, there is no standardized test methods for qualifying concrete in microorganisms bearing, bearing environment. That's the first point. And moreover, for example, um, European Standard 2061 does not consider microorganisms in aggressive environments. And moreover, it classifies these media, this type of media, mainly according to pH, which is, these are two uh, main shortcomings of uh, standards. So what the problem? Agro-industrial and effluents contain complex organic compounds which are transformed the, uh, under the action of bacteria into metabolites such as organic acids or CO2. And the pH is between 4 and 8. So there are two types of aggressive agents in these environments. First, the chemical compounds. So mainly organic acids which reacts with hydrates of the cement paste to form calcium salts, which can be insoluble to very soluble in water. The problem, the difficulty, is that these organic acids and the calcium salts are, are very varied chemical and physical properties. The uh, second type of aggressive agents is the bacterial activity, which has specific effect in the alteration. So to understand the alteration mechanisms in this type of complex multi-components environment, we implemented, uh, we decided to decouple phenomena by considering first studies in model media using synthetic organic acid. Cementitious specimens were exposed to these uh, synthetic organic acids and implementing experimental devices in order to studies the impact of the uh, bacteria in control uh, biologically uh, conditions. And finally, we validate uh, the, these results uh, by studying real effluents. 
So I'm going to present some results regarding organic acids and some regarding the effect of the bacteria. So what the, the objectives of the study on organic acid attack on cementitious materials were to understand the mechanisms of alteration by, by cementitious materials by the organic acids and understanding, uh, understanding the links between physical chemical properties of the acids and the salts and their aggressiveness. So the strategy was to combine experimental campaign where cementitious materials were exposed to organic acids and the degradation mechanisms were analyzed with a variety of analytical techniques such as mic electron microprobe or X-ray diffraction. And um, uh, modeling of reactive transfer and of equilibria in solution on a wide range of pH and concentration of acids in order to complete the understanding of the degradation mechanisms. So I'm going to show you some example. First, the relative aggressiveness of the acids in uh, agricultural effluents. So this is an experiment of immersion of cement paste specimen ex uh, immersed so in each acid taken separately, and the various solutions have the same composition, so same concentration of acid and same pH 4, except for oxalic acid, which has a pH of 1. So this is, the, this is the kinetic of alteration according to time on one year. And you can see that despite you have the same pH, pH the same concentration of acid, you don't have at all the same kinetic of alteration around acetic acid, uh, which is a reference acid because it's most uh, well known, you have much more aggressive acids so, such as citric acid. Uh, a specimen is dissolved in uh, less uh, than three months. And uh, less aggressive acids such as malic, tartaric, or oxalic acid. So what the problem? What happens? Actually, if we look at the specimen, we can see that around acetic acid, well, there is no precipitation of salt. You can see the formation of calcium salt at the, on the specimen. And in the, for this acid, the, the salt seems to protect the matrix. Uh, and in this case, the, the salt seems not to protect the matrix and, and even to worsen the degradation. Another comment. If we look at oxalic acid with a pH of 1, you can see that there is no degraded layer and no mass losses during one year at pH 1, and we have regularly renewed the solution. So it is definitely an evidence that pH should not in, is not enough to characterize the aggressiveness of an acid solution. We have really to consider the composition of acid of the, media, of the medium. So I'm going to show you only two examples of alteration mechanism with the uh, with the non-aggressive acid and with the worst acid uh, that we've studied. So the example of oxalic acid. So an experiment at pH uh, almost one. Uh, this is the composition, uh, the chemical composition profile of uh, the specimen according to the to the distance to the surface in contact with the aggressive solution here. And you can see that at pH 1, with, in this acid, the composition of the specimen uh, remains the same. There is no release of calcium at all in this very aggressive condition normally. So what happens, actually? Uh, at the, uh, in the outer layer of the specimen, calcium hydroxide it is transformed into, into calcium oxalate salt. and if we look at the molar volume, the molar volume of the salt, we can see that calcium oxalate, oxalate seals the porosity of the cement paste. Moreover, it is very stable and it adheres to the matrix. When we look, so the, the acid is fully protective to the matrix despite its very low pH. When we look at the most aggressive now, at pH 4, we can see that uh, the, the cement paste is completely destroyed and dissolved in the outer layer. In, in one month, you have four millimeters that has been dissolved. And there is a formation of calcium citrate, uh, which you can see 
Here, uh, so high amounts of calcium citrate as, fo as formed at the surface. What the problem? Calcium citrate has a very high volar volume, molar volume, and moreover, it seems that there, there is a low adherence of the salt to the matrix. So finally, when we have analyzed all the acids, we could find a strong correlation between the acid's aggressiveness and the molar volume of the salt, but it was not the only factor. So, just to conclude about this aspect on organic acids, we attempted to make this scan to summar summarize the parameters that influence the aggressiveness of organic acids. So the main parameter is not the pH, it's really the solubility of the salt. When the salt is soluble, two main parameters influence the aggressiveness. First, the chemical properties of the acid, so the pKa or the polyacidity, and the property of the paste, such as the stability of the calcium-bearing phases. But when the salt is slightly soluble to insoluble, the chemical properties of the acids are secondary parameters and the properties of the salts are really important, such as the solubility or the molar volume. And some parameters seem to influence, such as the affinity of the matrix or the mesoscopic shape of the salt, but for the moment it's not really very well understood. And also the properties of the paste will influence the aggressiveness. So, second aspect, second type of aggressive agents in such uh, in agricultural media are the bacteria. So, our objective in this study was to analyze the specific effect of bacteria in the degradation by the effluents. The problem is that you can separate the bacteria from their, their metabolites because they produce them continuously. So. We decided to, to work by difference between a medium which contains the bacteria and the uh, metabolites and a medium which contained only the metabolites. And we did that using a biomass filter here. And you can see between the two media uh, here some turbidity which is uh, significant of the presence of bacteria. So, and here the solution is clear, so there is no bacteria. Here you can see cementitious specimens, uh, which are exposed so, to these uh, environments. So, what did we obtain through this uh, pilot, which is named so BMB test? This type of results. So, this are the picture of the cross sections of the specimen after four weeks of immersion. In, the, in this test. So when you look at, this is almost the same composition, chemical composition of the medium in terms of composition of acid, in terms of pH. Here you have the bacteria and the metabolites and here you have only the metabolites. And you can see that the outer layer depth is twice as formed as the, the one in, uh, without bacteria. So you can see that really there is a specific effect of the bacteria. And when we have made the same experiment with only the synthetic, uh, with only the organic acid part of the medium, and we can see that we have even the lower uh, degraded layer depth. So this example clearly, sh what the problem actually, here at the surface of the specimen, uh, bacteria have formed a biofilm and then they produce very locally uh, high concentration of acids, which, uh, which cause a very aggressive uh, attack to the matrix. But if you only look at the composition of the medium, it seems to you that the medium is not aggressive at all. So here, the specific effect of the biofilm is clearly highlighted, and we show that we have to take the impact of microorganisms into account when we design concrete in such environments, it's very important. So, this was the first part regarding um, agro, uh, agricultural and environment. I'm going to show you now uh, a study on the reactivity of nitrates in nuclear waste repository. It's a completely different environment. So, what the problem? So, b um, intermediary uh, level long-lived nuclear waste repository are uh, type B waste, waste are stabilized in a bituminous matrix, which will be stored 
um, in steel containers, which will be grouped in a reinforced concrete secondary package. This package will be placed in a tunnel for int intended for their long, uh, long term repository at 500 meters uh, below uh, the surface. So, in Europe, this is in Europe. So, what the problem? After closure of the tunnel and resaturation in water of the cell, in this interface, which is maybe between a few, uh, a few hundred micrometers or a few centimeters, uh, you will have some water in the interface. So concrete will release uh, alkaline ions and other uh, chemical compounds. So the, me the medium will be alkaline. Bitumen will release some salts uh, that were used to stabilize the nuclear waste, for example, nitrates, some organic matter also, some organic acids, some gas, and some radium oxide. And at the medium, you have the, at the at the middle, you have the steel of the reinforced of the primary package. So, what the problem? Nitrates released by bitumen will constitute an oxidizing medium, which is favorable to the mobility of radionuclides. So, which is unfavorable to the safety of storage. But we know that the reduction of nitrates is possible through the action of bacteria, which will be present necessarily in this interface because of the presence of water, and because of steel, there is a possibility of reduction of nitrate strength to the surface catalysis of steel. The problem, so here, it would be favorable to the return to the safe conditions for the storage. The problem is that these reactions are not well known, especially in these alkaline pH, and alkaline conditions that will develop in the repository. So the question of the French National Agency for, for Management of Radioactive uh, Wastes is what will be the impact in, in time and space of this transitory oxidizing phase, of this critical transitory oxidizing phase. So, our questions, our objectives in, in this study were to determine which bacteria would be able to reduce nitrates in such alkaline conditions, what will be the microbial reactions, and what will be the interactions between concrete, bitumen, bacteria, and steel. So, in order to understand the, pheno the phenomena in this multi-phase, multi multi-components and complex environments, we decided to implement a step-by-step -step experimental approach in order to decouple the phenomena. So we first studied the, the interactions between the cementitious matrix, the organic matter, nitrates and steel under abiotic conditions, which mean without bacteria. Then we studied the uh, microbial reactions of nitrate reductions under simplified conditions. And then we implemented a specific experimental device in order to understand, to analyze the multiphase, the multiphase system, but here in close to real conditions with a pilot, in order to refine our understanding of microbial strategies in such conditions. And the data that are collected from such from the pilot are used to feed modeling that will predict the biogeochemical conditions uh, at the long term in the repository. So I will only show you an example of results that we obtained with the pilot. So the pilot is as follows. So there is at the center uh, an equipped bioreactor which contains an alkalophilic denitrifying bacteria, which is a type of bacteria that sh should develop in the medium uh, in the long term. So denitrifying is a type of bacteria we also need to reduce the, the, the nitrates. This uh, bioreactor is, is fed by a solution containing nitrates to be reduced acetate, which, which will be the electron donor for the bacteria to reduce nitrates, and cement licates to test 
the behavior of the bacteria in different alkaline conditions. And downstream of the bioreactor, we have an exposure chamber containing cement paste. So there are two main objectives of this pilot. First, to study the impact of concrete leaching on microbial denitrification here in the bioreactor. And then to study the interactions between microorganisms and concrete. So just a reminder, what, what is denitrification? It's a transformation, the reduction of nitrates into nitrites and then into nitrogen. And nitrogen is the most reduced form of uh, nitrates. So it, it is, uh, we, we expect that nitrogen is obtained so that we are in the most favorable conditions for the safety of the storage. So an example at pH 12, we, choose, we chose to use Alumonas desiderata, which is an alkalophilic denitrifying bacteria. And we can see that even at this very high pH, there is some bacterial growth. This is optical density. It measures the concentration of bacteria in the medium. So there is an activity. But you can see that in the chamber, in the presence of the cement paste, you have more activity again. So what happens, actually? There is the formation of a biofilm. This is the surface of the specimen, of the, of the cement paste. And you have a biofilm that had formed on the sound concrete. It was really at pH 12.5 uh, uh, at the beginning of the experiment. And uh, only after um, one month, we saw this uh, big biofilm on the surface. And what is also interesting, when we look at the nitrates concentrations in the, uh, in the test, this is the concentration of nitrates in the feeding medium here. And we can see that in the bioreactor, nitrates are reduced into nitrites. So that's fine. We have reduced ni nitrites, nitrates, but it's not the best. We would like nitrogen. And finally, when you look at the chamber in the presence of the cement paste, Nitrates are completely transformed. There is no nitrites. No nitrates. This means that everything has been transformed into nitrogen, which is very favorable. It seems that concrete enhances the transformation of, the, of, nitrites, of nitrates. So just to, to make a final scheme to, to summarize everything, regarding the biotic reactions, uh, at the interface, sorry, at the interface, uh, at the surface of the biofilm, at the surface of concrete, biofilm will be able to develop with alkalophilic, uh, alkalophilic denitrifying bacteria, for example. They will be able to reduce nitrates into nitrites and nitrogen using organic acids released by bitumen, which, which will be the electron donor, in very alkaline conditions. We also have studied abiotic reactions using carbon steel, and we could see, so without bacteria, we could see that nitrates could be reduced into ammonium uh, in the same chemical conditions. In this case, carbon steel was the electron donor. At the beginning of the experiment, we didn't see any degradation. The, the steel was sound, and after we see very uh, significant sign of uh, corrosion, but what is most interesting is that when we compare the two experiments in the same chemical conditions, the biotic reaction rates, so these reactions are 20 times, uh, the, the rates of the reactions are 20 times higher than the reaction, reactions that occur at the surface of the steel. So this is a, really a thing that it's very important to take into account the activity of the bacteria and of microorganisms in such environments, such as in environments such as repository of nuclear waste, where we think that no no life could develop. So, next step of our um, study will to investigate hydrogen as an as an electron donor, because a lot of hydrogen will be produced in the repository. So we know that bacteria could consume hydrogen and reduce nitrates, and it, would, it will enable to consume this undesirable gas that will be present in the storage. 
So, as a conclusion and prospects of this presentation, regarding first the biodeterioration, I, as I have already mentioned, further research should provide more insight into degradation mechanisms of cementitious ma materials by microorganisms activity, but also the impact of the materials, physical and chemical properties on the microbial activity. This will, for example, give some insight on why CAC mortar, for example, calcium aluminate mortar, are more uh, resistant than uh, ordinary, more ordinary uh, concrete, ordinary cement, in sewer environments. There is also a real need in test methods and standardization for all the context under consideration. I've mentioned biodeterioration in aggressive environments, but also biological stain proliferation, bio-based protective systems. Third aspect, there is a real need of modeling of cementitious materials microorganisms interactions. We have to understand, we have to model the activity of the biofilm at the surface of such reactive material as uh, uh, cementitious materials, but also the impact of the, of the biofilm. We have to model the impact of the biofilm on the material to predict service life uh, time. And uh, in, th in this particular case, by, for example, we have to progress on uh, the modeling of uh, attack by uh, metabolites that create expansive compounds which make cracks in the, uh, in the material. And then, uh, of course, standards need to evolve, standards for the recommendation of concrete design to better take the microbial impact into account. So, of course, all, uh, some of these activities are related um, to RILEM technical committees. So, uh, RILEM TCMCI, Cementitious Materials Microorganisms Interactions, was recently created, and we cover most of the most of topics uh, that we, that we could uh, regarding interaction between uh, the materials and the microorganisms. And you can also find some aspects but only the chemical impact of the metabolites in the biodeterioration in this book that we recently uh, issued uh, after the work of Rail MTC uh, 211 PAE. So finally, I would like to thank RILEM again. I'm really a grateful RILEM organization, first for giving the opportunity to young researchers like me and to researchers in general to meet to exchange, to have real exchange and real discussions and to work together. I would like to thank again the jury of uh, the Robert Lermit Medal for awarding me. And I would like to thank uh, Mark Alexander, which is a wonderful person and uh, that I, I had the good luck to meet uh, through RILEM. And of course, all my colleague members of RILEM TCMCI and TC211PAE, I think about Hank Junkers, who is secretary of, um, of uh, my TC, and uh, in 211PAE, Neil Dubely, which who is what is also the good luck to work, and for, uh, also my colleagues, former and current uh, PhD students and postdoctoral fellows in the, involved in this research, and of course, my academic and industrial funders. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you for a wonderful presentation, Alexandra. Now we have time for questions. Yeah, you have the mic. Okay, Alexandra, congratulations. It was a very nice yes. presentation. Uh, I would like to understand about the denitrifying bacteria that you use it. It is strictly anaerobic bacteria. Uh, yes, uh, I can remember. Yes, I think so. Yes. Okay. Yes, but uh, the, the medium. Yes, the medium. I didn't. Uh, I didn't mention it. Yes, but uh, there was, It will be an anaerob anaerobic medium. Yes, but we can also use a mixo mixotrophic uh, bacteria. We actually we tested two or three strains, 
And this one was okay. It was easy to find in the uh, microbial uh, provider, Sushotech. <laughs> so uh, we used this one, but we identified more uh, many bacteria that could uh, do this type of uh, reactions. Okay, and regarding the possibility of use hydro hydrogen yes. with uh, electro electron donor, yeah. uh, you need uh, autotrophic yes. bacteria. We, yes. But how, uh, how is the CO2 source in this case? Because if you use uh, autotrophic yes. bacteria... Yes, we give some uh, yes. Yes, we, we, we already performed the, the experiment and we, we add yes in the, in the experiment. So, actually, we think that the bacteria could, uh, could metabolize uh, the organic compounds in the bitumen. Okay, yes. but also CO2, organic compound and CO2. Yes. Okay, okay. In the, in the, and then this CO2 will be used to the autotrophic bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. More questions? My name is Hartwig Künzel from Fraunhofer IVP in Germany. Um, you showed us that the degradation depended on the different acids, organic acids that they had. And you used them all individually. Yeah. What would the mixture, what effect yeah. would the mixture have? We, of course, we tested also mixtures. I, I didn't have the time to, to mm. present. But uh, what we, when we don't use uh, oxalic acid uh, in the medium, Finally, the, when you mix acids, you have a worse attack, mm -hmm. the worst attack that you with the finally the worst acid in, in the environment in the in the in the solution. But when there is oxalic acid in the solution, even very low concentration, oxalic acid is preponderant mm -hmm. over the other, and the specimen is protected. It's a very interesting property of uh, oxalic acid. So it would make sense to add that. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yes, but we presented a paper on this uh, aspect uh, with uh, Celestine Vogel uh, okay. during the conference. So okay. you, you, there is a paper in, in, the, proceedings in the proceedings regarding yeah, oxalic acid. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander, for the very clear. <laughs> Thank you for the very clear and, and very good uh, presentation. Uh, I am interested in radioactive waste storage. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the bitumen is is inside the drama. Is you, you the matrix? Is, if I have understood the matrix, the waste, the radioactive yes. waste is mixed with bitumen. Yes, the that's bitumen. it. Mm -hmm. uh, the bacteria would be there in the bitumen because no. because if you have the concrete and after more concrete, where the the bacteria may may enter yeah. to the interface. Yeah. Thank Actually. You. We think that there will have two types of uh, microorganisms, two origins. The endogen endogenous, uh, the, the bacteria that, you will, that will be at the surface of concrete or, or bitumen because of uh, uh, the presence of men and uh, the, the construction works in, the, in, the, in the, the cells, in the tumor, and also we think that bacteria, uh, microorganism, will come from the water that will refill the, the, the repository, actually. So, brought, brought by uh, human activity and from water. But bac bac we think that bacteria will be very, really active in the spaces between the various materials, not, not inside the, the materials, not inside concrete. More questions? Thank you, <coughs> Alexandra, for this uh, nice presentation. Uh, I have seen in uh, the work about uh, nuclear waste storage that the nitrate could transform in ammonium. Yes. And uh, I wonder, because uh, I have working uh, long years ago, <laughs> nitrate ammonium is very aggressive for concrete. Yes. You're right. So uh, actually, we, um, when we saw that uh, ammonium could, uh, could appear through the abiotic reduction of nitrates, we were happy because we could uh, 
I could study the degradation uh, by ammonium formed through steel. It was interesting, but actually the the amount is uh, well was very low. The amount of ammonium formed was very low, so there was there was no degradation by ammonium uh, on concrete by ammonium formed through these experiments. But it is you're right. It's possible that in the storage there is an additional uh, action of, um, of ammonium formed through the reduction of nitrates uh, in, uh, in abiotic condition because of the surface catalysis of steel. And this will add, this source of ammonium, of course, will combine with other aggressive agents in the storage and that will, uh, of course, alter the durability of concrete. And we should take this into account also. You're right. Before I give away the medal, I'd like to explain a little bit the process of how this medal is awarded. Uh, we asked for applications and nominations for the uh, Rylam Robert Lermit Medal. Applications could reach the Secretary General until the end of a year. Generally, we get about 20 to 30 top-notch applicants uh, who are nominated. There is a jury comprising uh, four experts, including the TAC chair, the editor-in-chief of material structures, and two other experts uh, appointed by the Bureau of Rylam. So we go through the applications, and generally it is not an easy decision. We often wish we could give away 20 Rylam medals because of the quality of the young people who do apply. But uh, we take up the challenging task and decide on one person. And this person obviously comes to the Rylam Week, makes a presentation, and gets grilled. So we know how about the quality of the person. And also a paper is published by the Lermit Medalist in Materials and Structures. So Alexandra's paper will come out shortly. And also we are very happy to inform that this paper will be open access. And that means that anyone can access it. They don't have to buy materials and structures or even be a member of Rylam. So anybody in the world could directly and for free get, get this paper. In addition to it, material structures through Rylam also has nine other papers which are open access. So this is an initiative of Rylam and material structures to have a select number of papers, open access for free, that could be cited and used by anyone. So very soon you will have Alexandra's paper in, uh, in press. So now would be the moment to give the Rylem Robert Lermith Medal for 2014 to Alexandra Vertron.